Now let's learn about software design pattern. This is going to be really helpful. So let's get started. So back in 1967, object oriented programming was born and it started a big change in how we make software. It gave developers tools like abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance and encapsulation. These were big words and powerful ideas that change how tech industry operates for good. But knowing how to use this object wasn't easy. Most of it came down to the experience of individual developers or a lot of trial and error method, which was not an ideal scenario. To bridge this gap, back in 1994, a book was released named Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object Oriented Software. This was a game changer. It was written by four experts known as Gang of Four. This book showed developers on how to make strong, flexible and effective software and depending on the different scenarios, what are some of the common patterns you can use to leverage the abilities of object oriented programming. Think of it like this, classes, objects, interface, methods and all the other tools that object oriented programming provides us are just like Lego pieces. On their own, they are pretty simple. It's like a young kid playing with the Legos, putting pieces together to see what happens. But when you learn to follow the design patterns from the book, you can actually build amazing things just like you can make incredible structures with Legos when you follow the instruction. So in this video, we are going to learn everything there is to learn about software patterns. Let's try to understand some of the use cases for using the software pattern. Number one, it is considered best practices for typical type of scenarios. You can apply common occurring problems. It increases your efficiency in problem solving. Uh, it resolves many of the design issues because they have already been previously solved by commonly occurring design patterns. It makes system more maintainable. It makes code base more reusable. Hence, it is really important to understand these design patterns. And before we move forward, let's understand that what are the categories that divides these patterns. So number one category is creational pattern. These deal with the object creation mechanisms. Second category is structural patterns. These concern the class and object composition. And last one is behavioral pattern. These are concerned with the algorithm and the assignment of responsibilities between the objects. The first design pattern is actually singleton pattern. It ensures that a class only has one instance and provides a global point of access to it. A real life scenario, you can think of it like a government inside any country. There is typically going to be just one single government that exercises its executive power throughout the entire country and everyone should have access to that particular government services. Uh, technically, if we want to understand it, we can think of it like a logging system where a single log file is written by an instance of logger class. Using a singleton pattern in this scenario ensures that all paths of application use the same logger file instance. And typical use case scenario for a singleton pattern could be when exactly one instance of class is needed and it must be accessible to clients from all well-known access points. Second type of design pattern is factory method pattern. Now this defines an interface for creating an object, but lets the subclasses decide which class to instantiate. Think of it like a construction company that builds the house for its clients, but it only builds the outside frame of the house and lets the client decide that what type of house they want. Basically, do they want granite kitchen countertop or what type of equipments they want or what type of balcony they want, what type of wood they want in their house. So all of these things are determined by the client, but overall outside uh, external framework is provided by the company. Typically, uh, you can think of it like a UI library where factory method is used to create different types of UI elements based on the input it receives like buttons, text and fields. But all of this are actually controlled by the UI library. And a typical scenario where you would consider using factory pattern is when a class can't anticipate that class of its objects it needs to create and wants to delegate this decision. So that's why it uh, allows it to be controlled by subclasses. Now the third one is the builder pattern. Now this separates the construction of complex objects from its representation, allowing the same construction process to create different representation of the same complex object. Think of it like a fast food restaurant where you can choose various items like burger, drinks, sides, onion rings, french fries, whatever to create a custom meal. 
the process of making the meal remains the same but the content of what goes inside those particular items can change depending on the exact specific needs or various clients uh, think of it like a software development process where you are trying to build a text document editor uh, which can deal with different type of documents like maybe html document rtf document markdown document so it it uses the same process but assembling the component becomes completely different based on the type of document that we are going to use and this type of pattern is very good when an object needs to be created such that its construction is decoupled from its representation allowing the same construction process to create various representations next one is prototype pattern now this creates new objects by copying existing objects also known as prototype this pattern is particularly useful when creation of an object is more convenient or efficient through cloning now if you want to understand it with a real life example you can think of it like a photocopying a document instead of recreating the content of the document from scratch you just make a copy of it and then if you want to add stamps or if you want to make any changes you can make those changes on the created photocopy technical example you can think of it like in graphic design application when a user copies a complex graphic object that has already been created using the prototype pattern and then once the exact copy has been created uh, the user basically doesn't need to understand all the detail that went on to create that particular object uh, and typical scenario where you would consider using a prototype pattern is going to be when the cost of creating an instance of class is more expensive than cloning it so when the instance of a class can only have a few different combination of states now let's talk about adapter pattern this allows interface of an existing class to be used as another interface it is very useful when you have to integrate classes with incompatible interfaces so let's make it easy try to understand with with a real life example let's say that you are you currently live in us and for all of your electronic devices you have a charger that fits perfectly with the us socket or us pin now for some reason you decide to travel to europe now we all know that in the europe the wall socket is completely different than the american sockets which means now if you want to charge all of your existing devices with the same charger you will have you will actually need an adapter that goes between your existing devices and the european charger which takes in the input as the american socket and in the output it connects with the european socket now in this scenario the adapter is not generating the power or doing anything but it is allowing the incompatible american power socket to be connected with the a compatible european socket and that is the power of adapter pattern if you want to understand this with a technical example think of it like having an old database system and your new database system uses a different database interface now an adapter can be created in this scenario to allow the new application to interact with the old database system using its current interface uh, this is very powerful whenever you are in a scenario where you want to use an existing class but its interface does not match the one you need or you want to create a reusable class that corporates with the class which does not necessarily have the compatible interfaces now let's talk about composite pattern this allows you to compose objects into a tree structure to represent hierarchies it lets clients treat individual objects and compositions of objects uniformly so in terms of real life analogy you can think of it like a folder system on a computer each folder can contain files or other folders and these nested folders can once again contain files or other folders and so on so thus creating a hierarchical structure typically you can think of it like a graphical application where you have the ability to create circles and squares on top of it you also have the ability to create complex pictures or diagrams or shapes like pentagram or hexagon or something like that now all of these combined can be put in a single picture in order to generate an image where you can have several circle several different squares or even other pictures and all of this can compositely come together to generate the image you are trying to build so whenever you have the objects that should be treated the same way regardless of their complexity such as in part whole hierarchy 
where clients should ignore the difference between compositions and objects and individual objects. So in that scenario, try to think of using the composite pattern. Now let's talk about proxy pattern. This provides a placeholder for another object to control access to it. It is used when you want to simplify a version of complex or heavy object. Let's try to understand this with a real life analogy. A credit card is typically a proxy for your actual bank account. It allows you to access the money that is currently placed in your bank account without actually needing to carry the actual money. And now in software development, a proxy could be used for lazy loading of a large image. Instead of loading the entire image into the memory, a proxy image placeholder could be used until the real image is actually needed. You can use this kind of pattern when you want a more versatile or sophisticated reference to an object rather than just a simple pointer. This can be used for reasons like controlling the object creation and access, delaying the full creation until it is fully necessary or adding additional functionalities when accessing the object. Now let's talk about facade pattern. This pattern provides a simplified interface to a complex subsystem. It doesn't encapsulate the entire subsystem, but provides a simplified interface to its clients. If you want to think this in a real life scenario, think of it like a big, huge mega store. Now in this store, there are a bunch of different departments for electronics, uh, groceries, medicines, or whatever you can think of. Now, if you have some questions regarding different products, going to each different department and then trying to find someone to clear out your answers would be quite complicated and very inefficient. Rather than a simpler approach would be where you just have one single customer service department that you can directly go to and ask all of your questions combined at just one place. So that customer service department actually becomes an interface to the whole entire big box grocery store. And this is what facade pattern means. So in a software, a facade can be used for a library or a framework, providing the simpler interface to a set of more complex classes or APIs. Uh, so whenever you have a complex system that needs or you want that to expose to clients in a simplified way, or when there are many dependencies amongst clients uh, and the implementing all of the classes becomes too complicated, under these scenarios, try of thinking or try of utilizing a facade. Bridge pattern separates an object's abstraction from its implementation. So the two can vary independently. It's about preferring composition over inheritance. So let's try to think of a real life scenario over here. Consider that you have multiple remote controls for different type of devices in your home. Maybe one for TV, one for radio, one for your uh, DVD box, one for a DVD player, all of those different things. Now a bridge pattern would be like having a universal remote control. Now this is one single remote control allows you to control all the devices that are available right now. And that is called or that could be referred as a bridge pattern. So for an example, in a software application with a graphical user interface, the bridge pattern can separate the graphical user interface from the underlying operating system and the machine functionality working on the behind the scenes. So basically this allows you to change or add new graphical interface in the system or the operating system independently without connection with each other. Typically you use this kind of pattern when you want to avoid permanent binding between an abstraction and its implementation, particularly when they need to be selected or switched at a runtime. Now let's talk about decorator pattern. This adds new functionalities to objects dynamically by placing them inside special wrapper objects. Using decorators, you can modify objects behavior at runtime. So you can think of it like putting accessories or clothes. You can start with a simple outfit just like a t-shirt and a jeans, but then on top of that, you can dynamically add more accessories like a jacket, a scarf, a jewelry, or maybe some makeup or glasses or whatever to enhance your appearance. Basically in this case, decorator are the additional pieces that you are putting on dynamically on top of the underlying uh, clothes that you are simply wearing. So you can think of it like an text editing application. You might want to start with a basic text component and then you can dynamically add functionalities like scroll scrolling through the text document, spell checking, coloring, 
or all of these things can be uh, done by wrapping the text component with the retrospective decorator class. So typically you use this pattern when extending an object's responsibility is needed and inheritance is impractical because it would add unnecessary complexity to load to static classes. And that brings us to the observer pattern. Now observer pattern allows an object known as the subject to maintain a list of its dependents called observers and this notifies them automatically whenever any of the state changes. So think of it like a magazine subscription. So whenever a new issue is published or basically a state of magazine has been changed or the latest version of magazine has changed, it is sent out to all of its subscribers who have registered to receive it. In technicality, we can think of it like a weather monitoring application. So the weather station gathers all the data and keeps on sending updates to various display elements like current conditions, display, forecast uh, and what is going to be subsequent weather. And all of the weather data keeps on changing and the subsequent receivers receives this data uh, because they are just observing that what the weather patterns are going to be. So you use this pattern whenever a change to one object requires changing other objects as well, which means the change to the subject requires the change in the observers as well. And the number of objects to change is unknown or dynamic. Strategy pattern is a very important pattern. This defines a family of algorithms that encapsulates each one and makes them interchangeable. Strategy lets the algorithm vary independently from the clients that uses it. So think of it like travel planning. Depending on the time, budget or your preference, you might want to choose different modes of transportation. At one point you want to choose car, other point you might be choosing a train or an airplane to reach your destination. So each mode is a strategy or a different strategy for traveling. Technically, you can think of it like an e-commerce application different discount algorithms can be applied to a shopping cart. The strategy pattern allows switching between different discount algorithms like seasonal discounts, loyalty discount, prime member discount dynamically in real time. So when there are several ways to do a task and you want to decide the best way at the runtime or you want to avoid exposing the complex algorithm specific data structures, it would be great to use a strategy pattern. Iterator pattern provides a way to access the elements of an aggregate object sequentially without exposing its underlying representation. So think of it like flipping through the pages of book. You go through the book page by page or element by element without needing to understand an internal structure of the book, the aggregate object. So in the software development, an iterator pattern can be used to traverse a collection of objects such as list or a tree structure. For example, an iterator can be used to go through a list of customer record without the client needing to know how the list is being structured or actually stored. So when you need to provide standard way of traversing through the collection of objects without exposing the underlying implementation or when you have multiple ways to traversing through a collection and you want to encapsulate each one, it's good to use an iterator pattern in this scenario. These are typically going to be all the design pattern that you can understand. And basically, initially developers didn't know that what was the purpose of these design patterns and they started learning more and more. Once they realized that these patterns are really powerful, but when you start implementing or building systems on top of it, they actually end up creating a monolith applications, which in turns has its own negativity and uh, disadvantages. So that's why eventually the principal architects or more senior developers realize that adding too many design patterns in a single application might not be a good idea. And they went from playing with individual Lego pieces to building these complex Lego structures that are enormous in the size. Then again, back to building or playing around with individual Lego components to create more of a distributed system type of structure that contains a lot of architecture like pub sub mechanism or microservice architecture where all of the business functionalities are loosely coupled and they typically communicate with each other using either rest api or graph api or th things like that so 
the reason for making this video is to help you understand that what design patents are and what are the different options available. But now we are going to strictly focus more towards system design part for the subsequent videos.